Matt is with us in Pittsburgh. Hi, Matt. How are you? Hey, Dave. How are you today? Better than I deserve. What's up? Well, I've got a question for you, Dave. Um, my wife and I recently uh, sold our primary residence and bought a new one. Uh, we are on baby steps four, five, and six. Uh, the house that we bought needed some work, and um, we were starting to work on it. And I put my head up above a drop ceiling and looked up there and found some cash. And my question for you, as somebody who is a financial person, a real estate person, also somebody who, um, uh, you know, somebody who's ethical but yet is not a pushover in business, uh, what do we do with this? Do we, do we give it back to the owners? This, the, the house sale was about three months ago. I, my ethics is almost always solved by one question. I treat other people like I'd want to be treated. Okay. If I was the seller, if you were the seller and you forgot that you left cash in the ceiling, what would you want someone to do? Well, I mean... If, it was you, if, there were, if the shoes were swapped, if you swapped moccasins... And you yeah. walk a mile in the other guy's moccasins. What would you want him to do? Well, I guess I'd, I mean, I'd want it back. Yeah, yeah. I would. Yeah. I mean, if it was 30 years ago, it might be a little different. It's three months. How much cash? Uh, about six grand. And, and the people that sold it to you, um, sold you the house, are they, uh, uh, what age are they? I'm going to guess and say they're elderly. They're older. I, I don't know if I'd say elderly. Maybe uh, in their 70s. They're very well off financially. And yeah. the truth is, my wife and I talked about this. We don't need the six grand. They it doesn't matter really whether you need grand. it. It doesn't matter whether you need it. It's not yours. No. It's theirs. <laughs> okay. I mean, swap shoes. Yeah. It doesn't matter whether they need it or not. Yeah. Okay. That doesn't enter, to the, enter into the ethics. I mean, you're asking me my opinion. That's my opinion. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, yeah, I'm not chastising it. you. I'm just saying okay. that, that you found someone else's money that they forgot. Yeah. I mean, if you had found, if you'd reached up there and pulled down their wedding pictures, you would have well, called them and given them their wedding yeah. pictures. Yeah. And we talked about that, whether it's, you know, this, this cash is going to be at the end of somebody's bank statement. You know, uh, it's not like we found a wedding ring or something like that. So you, you found something that belongs to someone else and they forgot it. Yeah. And you okay. should call them and give it to them. Okay. That's what I would do if I were in your shoes. That's what we'll do. I appreciate it. Thank you, Matt. Open, uh, open phones at 888-825-5225. If you will stop a second in these situations, whether it's business or whether it's something like that, and that's a nice question. It's a guy's being, he's being sincere. I'm not, wasn't chastising him. Uh, maybe I was too much, but Kelly's looking at me like, yes, you are. But um, too much coffee today. But the uh, but the point is, the uh, uh, if you'll stop when you're in these things, and I have to do it too. When I'm dealing with someone who's being a twerp to me or something like that, I have to stop for a minute and go, okay, I'm going to breathe a second here, and I'm going to put the other guy's shoes on, and I'm going to walk around in his shoes for a little while. Just switch gears. I mean, completely, completely emotionally exchange places with them. You found a lost wallet. You found $2. You found $20,000. Sometimes the equation changes. But what would you want someone to do? If the roles were reversed, I tell you, you guys that run businesses, you gals that run businesses, we coach small businesses all over America through our entree leadership program. And I tell them all the time, listen, I can solve most of your HR problems, most of your compensation issues. How do you design a comp plan? What comp plan would you want? Now, I'm going to assume that you're a person who likes to earn your keep. You need to be worth what you're being paid. You don't want to be just given charity. And if you're one of those jerks, then I can't switch places with you. But if you're willing to work hard, get a callus and break a sweat, and you switch places with that person in, my, in your mind, then, then, then how would you want to be treated on that commission that's in question? It's question whether the commission is owed to the salesperson or not. 
when in doubt, you know what I do? I pay them. Why? What highly motivated, extremely loyal salespeople. And when every time there's a dispute, I keep the money, they don't get it. It's hard to retain talent, number one. It's hard to attract talent, number two. And number three, you scratch your head and wonder why the culture of your organization sucks. It's because of the way you treat your people. Treat other people like you want to be treated. It's the golden rule. Do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. And I've actually fired people using that. If I did that, I would expect to be fired. If I stole from the company, I would expect to be fired for stealing for the company. And so you steal, I will fire you. I don't, I, because trust is broken and I really can't, I can't negotiate with a thief. And so I'm done. It's not that I have a short fuse. It's that I have zero tolerance for thieves. So you steal, I'll fire you. I don't care if it's a roll of toilet paper. If that's your low bar for stealing, you're a really low bar thief, aren't you? I mean, if you'll steal toilet paper for people, you'll steal anything. Think about it. And so I can, I can even, in an extreme crazy situation like that, I can even exchange places there and go, well, crap, I'd expect to be fired if I did that. So I'll fire them because I can't trust them. And I'm not flipping about it like that. I'm not sarcastic about it. I'm always kind. I'm like kind of a sad day, but I'm not going to keep them. I'll keep people I can't trust. Organizations run at the speed of trust. And when their integrity is broken, it's broken. So how do you treat people? How do you pay people? When you're designing or you're redesigning a comp plan, which, by the way, with our growth pattern around here, we're constantly redesigning how we compensate things because things change so fast. What we're selling changes so fast. So how do you treat your sales team? How do you treat the sales manager that's getting an override? How do you treat the developer that's working on the project? Well, I, you know, I, one guy came in here and he said, you know, I got, I got, he had more degrees than a thermometer. This guy had been to college his whole life, I guess, and came in my office one day and he said, man, people that have degrees like me, you know, out there in the Fortune 500 world, they make, you know, they make a lot more than I'm making here. And I said, well, you should probably go to work there. Because around here, what you get paid for is not the degrees that you have. Around here, your raise is effective when you are. So if you learn something while getting those degrees and you actually apply that and you cause this organization to win because of it, then you'll be compensated appropriately. But strutting around here, throwing around your sheepskins doesn't get you nothing. This is an organization of performers. So I treat other people like I don't want to be treated. I don't expect to be paid for my degree. I have never walked up to a customer and said, you know, you need to buy my book because I have a degree. You need to buy my book because there's something to say in it that'll help you. Now I've earned your business. That's why the total money make over so five million copies, because it helps. It serves. Treat other people like you want to be treated. How about the waitress that dropped all your food right as she got to the table? And you have to start the order completely over. Have you ever had one of those days? Now, I'm hungry. As a matter of fact, I'm hangry, which is hungry and angry now, right, at that point. When that food, you know, I've been there, but, but, I mean, how, you know, bless her heart, do you want to be treated? How do you want to be treated? Maybe you need to be clear with somebody. Maybe there's people you've been dancing around the issue. We have a saying around here, to be un clear is to be unkind when you dance around the issue and people don't really know you're frustrated about something that's not kindness that's cowardice kindness is letting them know gently and firmly where they stand in this relationship due to their behavior that's actual kindness i'm not saying walk through everything like a bull in a china shop but be clear be clear solves a lot of your ethics problems this jesus stuff do unto others as you'd have them do unto you.